Hi, uh, thanks for having me to this wonderful workshop. Uh, today, I would like to share some of uh, my personal uh, kind of learning algorithms that might work for some graduate students. So there are some kind of disclaimer first. Um, and first, this algorithm works reasonably well for me. Um, it's the algorithm only focus on research. And it's not for teaching or mentoring or outreach. And it may or may not work for you. It depends, I mean, which environments you are at, or maybe depends on which years, maybe it probably doesn't work in five years, I guess. So I, I feel free to adapt your, the message to change the message to fit your need. And if you have fancier and better algorithm, please do share with me that I can, I can try to learn better. Okay, so let's start with a baseline algorithm. The base algorithm is we have uh, we, we have T step, we sample T steps, capital T steps. And each steps, we, we have some randomness in this process. And we have you as a researcher. And the purpose is we have a paper generator uh, or maybe a AK author, which, which to, to, to write a paper. So this randomness um, contains something like, for example, a, a different research topic. Maybe you are lucky or lucky in the review process. Maybe your experiments are lucky or unlucky. And uh, there are a bunch of things, so there are always some randomness in the search. And this is the algorithm. So the output of this algorithm is a collection of papers. And we can talk about different objectives, how to, to measure these this outputs. Maybe when people can count the number of papers, people will talk about these metrics, uh, like, like, like uh, citations, H index, R index, blah, blah, blah. And people, uh, fundamentally, people care about the impact of research, how research, can change the society uh, as a whole. And we are not arguing about which metrics are better in this talk, but the, let's say you have some metrics. And, and so I will present a slightly different algorithm for you by modifying the baseline algorithm. So again, you, you try to do T steps. And each step you try to generate, you try to write a good paper, hopefully it's a good paper. Um, but we insert a new line here, is you also want to improve yourself to make you a better graduate student or better scholar in general. And then that's the, that's the for loop. So the output of, of these algorithms is you, which is a theta, and your research you have done in, your, in the graduate school is a collection of papers. So the objective could be a different objective about you. What is the expectation of your ability to do great research in the future? Because you are not only doing the search for maybe four or five years, you also have a very long career to go. You want to learn all the skills which enable you to do great research even after you graduate. So again, this F measures some kind of impact of your work. And Z is kind of, if you random sample some new papers, how good they are. Okay, we'll talk about four, kind, four types of algorithms. Uh, this one is learning from shared experience, learning from examples, learning from feedback, and learning through trial and errors. Now talk about the first one is kind of what we are doing. Some, someone shares some experience either works or not with you. And, and, and it's kind of, I, I, I treat it as a kind of pre-training or transfer learning. Basically just initialize your weights from a different uh, person's weights. About, about this initializing is not as easy as just copy and paste weights. So there are lots of online notes, tutorial workshop available. I recommend uh, this one, but also the the good system of CVPR, um, or, or, um, and there are a bunch of good, good talks, and 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 there are also other kind of online notes which are which are not in the tutorial or workshop format, but just like PDF format. And I encourage you to also um, okay as other resources. So what, what thing I enjoy is uh, this 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 series humans of AI storage not stats. I really enjoy it. I I watch it watch it a lot. And I also like dropping Huang's advice. There are a bunch of GitHub advice, which are very easy to read, very easy to actually, relatively easy to implement. And, and so here are some, some, some screen, sc screenshots. I, I, I encourage you to, to, if you want to know for how to do the search, I will encourage you to seek advice for two or three people rather than just one people, because everyone has opinions that are kind of biased towards their own experience. And, and, I also encourage you to watch them early, not in the final year. So I, I watch all kinds of videos, this kind of videos, like good season of CPR when I, I'm either driving or I'm maybe doing some laundry or maybe I'm doing some landscaping. 
um, so so you don't have to. I I don't think you have to like sit in a lab and and watch watch it very seriously. I feel like because you can actually I mean watch it maybe twice if you don't catch it first first time. Yeah, it's it's very non technical and and kind of making you more relaxed. You don't have to be super serious about watching these videos. Okay. But watching them early, not in the uh, when first in your last last year when you are postdoc, okay. And uh, maybe a second approach I found very effective, effective is learn from great work, learn from great researchers, learn from learn from great writing styles. It's kind of like distillation. You want to distill some 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 great examples, skills in some parts of either the writing style or like, or like the, how do how do they how do they do experiments and how they get their ideas. How, how they propose their message, how they formulate the message to, to yourself. So it's kind of like knowledge distillation or imitation learning. And so you want to, for example, you want to learn from great researchers. Uh, one two inspire, um, inspiration for me is always uh, Cesar and, 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 and Pat Harrington, which they allow us to have this idea, Cesar and have this idea of connect a human to a models. And and and, and Pat Harrahan this idea is how can we use computers uh, to help people uh, tell their stories, and they actually also they are being so many great algorithms like start software, hardware, and the system like great companies to achieve their dream, which seems to be unlikely or um, impossible when in, in a very in like 1980s or 1960s. Okay, and. Um, but maybe you, you 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 are not trying to win training awards. Maybe they are too far away from you. But that's going to be a good inspiration uh, on, a, on a high level. You can also learn something from like kind of well-established researchers. For example, one of my favorite researchers when I was undergrad, when I graduate students, is Takia Igresh, who did this famous tally system, which allow user to, to draw a little sketch and you can create a 3D model out of it. It's pretty, it was pretty cool. For me as an undergrad student, it's still very cool now, even, even as in, in 2021, okay? And there are also other systems which allow a human to, to, to give some suggestion to, to the computer and computer can give you some collection, give you some new suggestions, and you can work with the computer and get some, achieve some computational purpose. Um, and maybe they are too, still too established for you as a young student, maybe you want to learn something from great researchers, but still relatively young, like junior researchers in their early career. For me, the one, two junior researchers, uh, which is young researchers, uh, they, 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 were, they were young at that time, they are still young, but they were, they were very young and very junior when, when I was a student, is, is Noah Snively and, and James Hayes, who shows that you can actually create all kinds of effects by using lots of lots of data by, and, and understanding this data as an or 2D. Okay. So I got lots of inspiration from their work and how they write the paper, how they do the presentation, and, and that's really helpful. Um, but, um, but you can also learn from not from other great researchers, you can also learn from mentors who work with you because you have a chance to look at look and watch them more closely, not all, not all from a paper, from a video. You can you can look, watch them closely on a daily basis. And and one, one, two, two mentors I, I, I learned a lot when uh, with uh, Asim, who was my first uh, mentors in the industry research internships. And he taught me how to anticipate uh, readers' questions. So, so, so he, he had very good anticipated readers' questions. For example, you have some questions, you write some paper in section two, some readers may have question, oh, why not you try method B? My, what, is this component important? Why not do run this experiment on data set B? Why not you also apply this idea to a different applications? And, and, and I think teach me how to anticipate all these questions and answer them in the, in the section four or five. So after I work with him, I, I, I don't have any, my first course or co first course paper got, got rejected. Okay, but I got a bunch of rejection before, before I work with him. Okay, and then I also, uh, like uh, to learn a lot from Bill Freeman is just to be a nice person and try 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 to be positive and try to support students. And I I I was actually for a long time I was not sure Bill was that interesting in my research like generating models. I think Bill was very interesting. I still interested in moon camera like corner camera or all kinds of computational photography projects. 
but Bill is still kind enough to provide me some guidance, give me some tips, both in my research and in my career. Uh, and he is always very supportive and always there. And um, and you can also learn from your collaborators and uh, lab mates. One one example, one one person I learned a lot is Richard Zhang, who actually always try to apply first principle methods like a single processing message to deal with computer vision models, just not train some random network with some random loss, get some random results, you try to understand why it works, why it doesn't work, and why, and I try to understand in a very great details, like low level processing details. And we also have some recent work, we try to, uh, which we found out that there are all kinds of issues with the evaluation code of GANs, and if you apply a different library, they give you different downsampling results. So so we, I learned a lot from, from Richard, and I start caring about all these low level details by working with Richard. The second person I learned a lot is, is Taesong. Taesong teach me a lot about programming and, and how also how to manage the experiments in large scale. We done did a bunch of nice work together. And and, and also Taesong was, for, for a long time, we, we, we write code together. So I look what he wrote, he, he wrote what I wrote, we look at the screen together, but only one person is writing a pure programming. And, and, and we try to try to revise each other's code, each other's functioning. We try to find a kind of common ground, like a consistent API code we can communicate in research projects. So, so that, that's a very good experience for me to learn his coding style to add that to and to find some coding style which can work for different persons and to make my code more modular. And also he is very good at learning all kinds of large scale experiments. I also learn a lot from him. And I also learn a lot from some ex external collaborators like uh, Ming Yu was 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 a very established researcher at NVIDIA. And one thing I learned from him is you shouldn't stop our research in, in the paper format, right? So we published this paper, uh, Spade or Gauguin. Uh, the first also was still Taesong Park and who did a lot of experiments at that time. But Taesong left the internship, finished the project. It was Mingyi and other NVIDIA engineers who take the code and make it into online demo. And we have an online demo and we'll publish the demo and we'll win some some award in Sigra, real time live award in Sigra. And you thought that might be the end of the project, right? You, you, you have some code, you have some paper, you read the code, read the code, made a demo with some awards, that's it, right? That's, that's it. About two years later, maybe you told me, oh, you excited to share with me. Actually, they built a product out of our, our, our research, and you can actually download that product to, to a Windows machines, and you can use that, everyone can use that. So that maybe you told me how you can go from a paper and go to a demo and go to a kind of exhibition and go to a product within three years, four years a time frame. I learned a lot from him. Uh, and, and last person I want to mention from my collaborators is David Bow, who teach me how to understand why something is working, why something is not working, try to understand your network, maybe be, convince me the network is kind of, you can understand something about network, it's just not a purely black box. And he is also very a very good educator here, excited about education. So I can show you, I often see him explaining the post, explain this very complicated idea to undergrad and, and try, to come, try to spread his passion about research to undergrad or some young researchers. And I, I try to also learn from him and try to be a better educator and try to be a better teacher. But you can also learn not only from examples, you can also learn from feedback. And you, you, you just need a very smart but also a gentle discriminator, a teacher. So he or she needs to be know what is good and what is bad. Uh, the, the discrimination needs to know how to make things better. Like you can't just say everything is bad. But you, you need to fix things as well. Teach the student how to make things better. And you need to, you need to kind of find your learning rate a little bit. Don't, have too strong, too big learning rate, a little bit gentle adjustment of, of, of the student model. So without destroying the student's confidence. So I'm, I'm very lucky to have uh, my advisor, uh, Alex Afros, who, who kind of know all these three aspects and uh, has, has a very good balance. And I, but I think others, even you have a very good advisor, students also need to learn from advisor's feedback, right? Maybe you can look at drafts, paper drafts, V0, V1, V2, how, what, what kind of comments your collaborators or advisor has made to improve the paper from V0 to V5 or V10. 
Maybe you can look at the individual figures V0 to V5 after the deadline, maybe maybe even between the submission, how you learn what has changed from V0 to V5. I try to summarize something about that. And you can also learn from reviews, like you maybe you got paper get rejected, maybe you can learn from the reviews and, and try to have a better paper. And one thing I found recently, you can also learn a lot of skills from reading actually open review. It's basically if you work on something, you can find some similar, some lots of paper with similar with similar topics and see how this paper get rejected, see how this paper get accepted. You don't have to be area chair for that. For IKEA, the reviews is publicly available. You can just do that before your paper get rejected too many times. Okay. Um, and then lastly, I want to mention is that called learning from kind of trials and errors, kind of how, how reinforcement learning works. It's a very slow and a painful process. And, and you might learn some lessons, but you might make, make, need to make a mistake multiple times. But eventually you learn in a hard way. And so I, I learned two things from that. I learned to, I learned, I learned from my bugs I wrote. I try to summarize all the bugs I wrote. And, and I also try to learn to how to better open source my research. So here are the bunch of bugs I wrote. I don't have time to, have to go through it due to the time limit. There's a lot of details, small details. I try to summarize it. It's, it's not all the bugs I wrote. It's just some of the bugs I wrote. Like I can't, I can't go through all the bugs I wrote. Also many, I take so fix a lot of bugs I wrote. Um, and so I, and sometimes I want to mention is even your network training and test is correct. You may have a bug in visualization or evaluation which was also very critical. Um, and, and another thing I want to emphasize here is I learned in a hard way is how to open source my research. So in the beginning of my PhD, I, I just, I don't release the code because nobody releases the code. It's still out, right? In 2014, maybe 1% of people release codes. And I was busy with the next project. I was busy with CWAP Asia of CWAP, uh, CVP of CWAP Asia, ICTV of CVP. So I just keep, keep very busy and then I start releasing my code for my SQL Asia paper, my ICTV paper. I do put a code which people can download, but I'm, I'm not very active in maintaining the code. And then maybe I say, oh, maybe I should have a GitHub project uh, and maybe I should maintain the code more actively so that people can use it and find it useful for their own research. But unfortunately, the Ciano was no longer supported and I cannot even compile Ciano now. So, but so I'm trying to write a PyTorch version now. I'm, I'm still trying maybe by, by, by in the winter, uh, during the winter break, but I kind of keep, keep delayed. Um, it's, and, and, and then we tried to, and Philippe Sola wrote his picks to picks uh, with a bunch of other authors. And I wrote, and Tayson and I wrote Psycho again. And, and, um, but somehow the, the same issue happened. We, 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 we wrote it in the Lua and Torch, but then suddenly, uh, every, Torch and Lua is everyone is using PyTorch and TensorFlow and nobody is using Lua, right? But Lua was very popular when we actually did the paper. And so we case one and I decided to let's just spend two or three months implementing everything and reproducing everything in PyTorch to 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 so that our research can st still be used by users and without they they have to learn how to do the programming in Lua. Because everyone knows Python, right? Not too many people interesting in writing raw code, I think. Okay, so we have this PyTorch cycle going to pick to pick after several months. And it was active maintained. We are still maintaining it last month. And, but we kind of we kind of don't have time to answer all the questions and the issues since I joined CMU and maybe since Tayson joined Adobe. Because it requires a few hours per week, every month, every week for four or five years. We, we had this time when I was a student at postdoc but I kind of don't have enough time for that. So we are kind of into big trouble again. And we're kind of still looking for solution for that. And, and then we have more recent projects, which I try to encourage my students to maintain the code and answer the question more actively. Just don't just abandon a project after the project is finished. But the students will graduate one day and interns, if you have some interns, they may finish their intern project. They, are, they, they, they wrap up the projects, they, they move on to with new interns, new internships with new projects. So it's very hard to maintain open source projects. I think it's incredibly hard, even you try your best, okay? So what the reason why it's so hard is there are always this new deep learning library, every company wants to have like new libraries every few years. Maybe should you follow some recent prog, as there are new versions, as they change the API, 
well, which is not very nice, but change the API very often, like change the name of the API, change how you, how you call it, make things like into GPUs, they ch change it every six months or one year. So are you following recent practice? Or, but if you follow the recent practice, is, uh, is your code still, still you do, does your code still get the same results of the paper? Still reproduce the results? Maybe not, maybe, who knows? Are you testing all, all each time you have a new version you test whether your code can produce reproduce the results? Probably don't have the computing resources for that. So what happens if the library is discontinued like Ciano, what kind of Lua kind of is discontinued? What, what should you do? Like, are you moving to new library but it's like very old project, right? So, so they also like pre-train models. Like you might sometimes you require pre-train cafe for something, or maybe a model with uh, is in cafe. Even you well into writing PyTorch, you have to retrain the model, and, and then you convert the weights. It's very complicated. Maybe you have different results when you convert the weights. And they also you see evaluation code. Sometimes you're written in PyTorch, TensorFlow, uh, like like maybe Jax or Keras. So many libraries. And then it depends on different version. We get slightly different number for the same model. If you use PyTorch 1.5 or 1.8 or TensorFlow 1.0, 2.0. So it's incredibly hard to maintain open source research in a deep learning era because it used to be everyone like C++ or MATLAB for 10 years, nothing has changed. Yeah, not, not changing the C++ behavior, but now we change everything uh, every six months. It's very hard to maintain that. Try our best, but it's very hard. And uh, also you have more and more projects. For me, I will spend 25% time on submission, 25% time on camera ready, and try to prepare for the conference. I spend 50% of time on maintaining the code base, answer questions, making slides, try to write more tutorials of my paper, and, and try to try to maybe make more talks of the paper, right? But then you have more more, more projects, and, and then you have more projects. So the time you can spend for maintaining all the projects are less and less. So it's, a, it's a big issue for me and maybe for a lot of people. So we don't know how to solve it. So if you have some new algorithm to solve that, please send, please send me an email, okay? So, so in short, we try to have an algorithm for you, not only just for your papers you wrote, if you can improve yourself, either through kind of transfer learning, like like imitation learning, adversarial learning, like reinforcement learning, whatever learning algorithm you want. The key is you want to do not forget to improve yourself, right? Do not forget to improve yourself. Try to, if you do a project, try to summarize what is the largest mistake you made for that project. Hopefully you don't make the same mistake. And what is the thing you are most proud of for each project? And try to make some notes, try to have some good memory with your co-authors, or maybe you experience lots of things with your co-authors, try to learn some lessons from that. And hopefully you become a better researchers and do not forget to improve yourself. Thank you.